Hi, folks. Welcome back to our discussion of the endocrine system. Uh, remember that we went over the general functions of the endocrine system, and then we covered the different chemical classes of hormones that we find in the body. Now we're going to focus on the pituitary gland. Um, I want to remind you that you should be filling out your worksheet as you uh, go through these lectures. Okay, so in this section of the lecture videos, we will be answering these questions. One, what is the structure of the pituitary gland? Two, what are the functional differences between the anterior and the posterior pituitary? Um, three, what are the pathways of hormone release from the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary? And finally, what are short and long loop negative feedback pathways for hormone secretion? Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so I just want to remind you that we can find endocrine glands all over the body. However, we do have one very special endocrine gland, the pituitary gland, okay? And it's special basically because so many hormones come from it, okay? Um, the pituitary gland plays an important role in the endocrine system. Okay, so let's take a look at the structure of the pituitary gland. Okay, so um, the pituitary gland can be divided into two main parts. Uh, the first is the anterior pituitary. Um, the second is the posterior pituitary. And I do want to mention uh, its location in the body, right? So the pituitary gland uh, is kind of an outcropping of the brain, kind of hangs down from the brain towards the front here. Okay, so the anterior pituitary is in the front. Anterior means more towards the front, uh, and the posterior pituitary is in the back. Okay, um, they differ in their functions and in their the tissue type that makes them up. Okay, so the anterior pituitary is an actual endocrine gland made of like endocrine tissue. The posterior pituitary, on the other hand, is actually just neural tissue. It's the extension of neurons that actually originate up here in the hypothalamus, okay? Okay, so let's uh, take a look at each of these, the anterior and the posterior pituitary, starting with the posterior pituitary because it's a little simpler. Um, so looking at the posterior pituitary, first I just want to kind of uh, give you a little more detail about that structure. Like I mentioned before, we have these neurons that originate in the hypothalamus and they stretch down into um, the, the pituitary, right? So this part of the pituitary, the posterior pituitary, is basically it just represents an extension of these cells that originate in the hypothalamus, okay? And these are neural cells, neurons, okay? So taking a look at how we release hormones from the posterior pituitary. Um, the way it works is this. Basically, I just wanna point out that, that these um, little bullet, bullet points on the right are kind of the same as the left here. Um, I've just sort of, uh, actually I made it bigger so that it, it could be uh, easier to read. Um, anyway, okay, so um, first of all, um, I guess I should maybe start by saying that um, the hormones that come out of the posterior pituitary are referred to as neurohormones. Um, and a neurohormone is a signaling molecule that's synthesized by a neuron and then released into the bloodstream. Okay, so that's why we call them neurohormones because they come from neurons. And then the hormone part comes from the fact that they. Uh, are released into the bloodstream. All right, so looking at how these neurohormones are synthesized and released from the posterior pituitary, we can see that the neurohormone is made in the cell body of the neuron. So we haven't really gone over um, neuron structure yet, but just suffice it to say that there's this part of the neuron uh, where these neurohormones are made, okay? Um, then they're packaged into these vesicles and they travel down what's called the axon, this long part of the neuron, okay? And um, these secretory vesicles then 
kind of hang out in the axon terminal, this part of the neuron here, um, and they're released by exocytosis. So um, just like other processes of exocytosis, we have um, some regulation happening here, right? So these uh, secretory vesicles are hanging out, waiting for a signal to tell them to be released into the bloodstream. Okay. Okay, so we have two hormones that are made by the posterior pituitary. These are those two hormones. First of all, oxytocin, which is a kind of a um, reproductive hormone. So it uh, controls lactation, it controls uterine contractions during childbirth. You might remember from our first set of lectures. Um, so that's one of the hormones made by the posterior pituitary. And then we have a second hormone made by the posterior pituitary. It's called vasopressin. Um, also goes by some other names like ADH. Um, and that uh, regulates water retention in the kidneys, water reabsorption by the kidneys, okay? Oh, okay, so here's a question for you. What class of hormones are these? Okay, so remember we have our three chemical classes of hormones. What class of hormones do these guys fall into. So go ahead and hit pause, look at, or look at the structure, hit pause, and then answer that question. So go ahead. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and give you this answer right here. Hopefully you figured out that these are peptide hormones. Um, looking at the structure here, you, you might get confused by the fact that you see these rings here. Those might look a little bit like the cholesterol-based steroid hormones, but um, looking at each circle here, okay, you'll see that those are amino acids and not carbon atoms, right? So um, the rings that we saw in the steroid hormones were carbon-based rings. Um, these are actually entire amino acids. Okay, so these are both peptide hormones. Another thing that I just kind of want to point out is that kind of that fits with what we saw over here, right? So just remember that peptide hormones are secreted by exocytosis. Um, so you're seeing what you would expect for a peptide hormone, right? Or being packaged into a secretory vesicle and then released by exocytosis.